Cynthia, it's Natasha, and thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are going to be creating a kind of partial, fussy cut, uh, floating kind of image with a little bit of colour peeking through. I'm not really 100% what to call it, but I absolutely love this card. This can be done with any uh, stamps and images that you have that are going to work. But today I'm going to use this Fruity Likes stamp set. I use this entire stamp set to create a gift set of craft colored cardstock cards. And I even showed you how I made the envelopes and turned it into a gift set and everything. So I will link that video down in the description box below if you're interested in seeing another way to use this stamp set. But for today, I have used my anti-static powder bag on this four and a quarter by five and a half inch sheet of cardstock. Then I am going to stamp this down in some Versafine Onyx Black Ink, which is a pigment ink. It is crisp stamping, and that enables me to add some clear embossing powder to this. This is going to help me uh, later on with my coloring and things, uh, but you don't have to do this. Definitely don't have to. But for sure the main two reasons that I do it is I like the extra little bit of shine and dimension that it gives the image and as I said it helps me with my colouring later. So uh, definitely optional though. I have Once I have heat embossed this, I am going to use Distress Oxides to colour this today. I use these pretty much like watercolours and I've picked out some Pine Needles Mode Lawn which are two greens, a vintage photo which is a brown and ripe persimmon and candied apple which are really really oranges I guess. Um, so I just picked out anything that I kind of had in my stash so you don't have to have these colors and of course you can use any medium at all. Just whatever you feel comfiest using whether that be watercolors or whether that be uh, pencils, coloring pencils, whether it be alcohol markers, anything is going to work fine here but I, what I have been doing is just squeezing the lid of my Distress Oxides just gently so that some of the ink transfers onto the lid of the oxides. Now I'm sure this isn't recommended so please don't uh, take my word for it and I have never had a lid crack or anything like that but it just transfers some of the ink onto the top of the lid and that way I'm able to use it as a bit of a watercolor palette perhaps. I don't put too much water in there or anything. I don't want to damage my ink pad um, but yeah I'm just doing some really really quick coloring and using a couple of colors for the leaves so I'm going to come in with the mode lawn color which is the lighter of the two and I did add some water to the leaves first. I do have to bear in mind that this is not watercolor paper so it is not going to move around as much as it perhaps would on watercolor paper and I need to also remember not to go over it too many times. I don't want it pilling or anything like that as well. Then this is the pine needles color which I'm coming in and add a little bit of dimension and just a little bit of shading down the center of the leaves. Not too much, nothing too fancy. I always just do my best when it comes to coloring and I watch other YouTube videos and kind of get tips about how they uh, do really really basic coloring and I take on board what I can and I have I think I've gotten a little bit better <laughs> but still not my forte but I do what I can the leaves are done and then I'm going to move on to some red some of the candied apple I think I just end up using candied apple and then I am actually going to use some vintage photo as well but I am going over the whole apple with some of the red kind of a lighter wash is what I was going for um, with the red so that I could add kind of a little bit of shading and a little bit of dark edges over on the right hand side but um, yeah as I said either either I'm just doing my best with what I have and with what I'm able to do <laughs> This is where I bring in a little bit of the vintage photo, the brown, and if I blend it in with the red ink, it kind of provides that shadow, that darker shade of red or darker shade that I was looking for. I did just want to say quickly while I have a minute that I am so, so appreciative of those who leave comments and uh, give me a thumbs up, those sorts of things that let me know I, that you are enjoying the content that I am putting out there. I read all of the comments. I do my best to reply to as many as possible. I generally dedicate like an hour and just sit down and read through comments and re uh, reply to as many as I can or help out or answer the questions as many as I can. So I apologize if I've missed your questions somewhere along the way. But if I do see questions, I definitely answer them. I'm happy to answer anything. The, the uh, Facebook page, our Facebook page is also another way if you are trying to get a hold of me. Um, I also have my email address is in the description box below this video. If you like snail mail, I have my PO box address, which is in the description box below. Lots of ways that you are able to get hold of me. 
and I love to hear from you and I love feedback so I appreciate all of it so thank you so much now this is the part where things are going to get fun in the card I have my tea ruler but any ruler is going to work just fine and I also have a pencil and I'm going to draw two lines that make sure both of them go through my image you actually probably don't need to do that you could probably pop your lines wherever you wanted to and this would be a really fun one to experiment with um, as I mentioned my Facebook page is a great place that you are able to contact me or able to post uh, photos of your creations if you are inspired by this card or have created your versions of this so I would love to see those and the group is called come crafting with Natasha but as I said there's a link down below now I did bring out a couple of different pairs of scissors here these are my long bladed ones for doing those nice long cuts then I'm taking my fussy cutting scissors and I just cut that big bit out so it's kind of easier to get to it but I'm going to follow exactly along the outline of the image and I'm going to do the same for the top and I'm going right next to the image I chose not to leave any white space but if you found fussy cutting difficult then you could do this as well now another way to do this would be doing some partial die cutting I think you would still end up having to do some uh, kind of fussy cutting or some cutting with a blade like this but you could probably do some of it but honestly for the amount of time you're getting the dies out lining them up all of that sort of thing um, I don't even have dies for this stamp set but I mean if you have them you could give it a go depending on what your image was but for me it was just as easy to get the tools out that I have and I loved cutting out all these little pieces I feel like this definitely adds to it that you can cut all these little pieces out so this is a craft knife and I just have a cutting mat underneath me and I'm cutting out all those little pieces of white so I kind of have like a floating image in between those two pieces there and of course this is one of those techniques that you can dive into your stash and use a lot of the different stamps that you have it could be flowers birds could be fruit it could be um, any little character you can choose a whole lot of different things that would work really nicely with this technique I don't know if I said it but this uh, stamp set is called fruity likes and as usual there will be links to everything in the description box below the video I am taking a brush marker a black brush marker because that is what I stamped the image in and then mainly from the underside but I did go a bit risky right here <laughs> but mainly from the underside I am just going around the all the cut lines that I have done and this is going to make your fussy cutting look amazing it is going to take away all of those white edges and is well worth taking the time to do so it's good to have a kind of big brush marker to get in there and this is what I'm left with for the minute now I have this peppermint paper pad here because I there are a whole lot of options that you can kind of take this design to from here but look at all the different colored backgrounds and so many of these would suit the kind of reds from the apples would kind of uh, really bring out the colors so I would put almost any of these colors behind here so so many I thought originally I might go with red but I found like it was too close and this kind of sea blue turquoisey duck egg blue I'm not sure what the color is but this kind of blue cardstock here worked perfectly I have some peacock feathers in distress oxide ink and I have a finger dobber and I'm going to go over with a stencil and this just gives it a little bit more interest than being so flat behind the card I accidentally wasn't holding the stencil well enough and it shifted on me on that other side so I'm just going to flip it over and then hold the stencil down better this time and add some ink I'm mainly just going to go down the middle because this is going to cover the panel that we have cut out behind the apple as I said there are a whole lot of different kind of um, options that you could take from here with popping it up on foam tape or I mean a whole lot of different things but I am going to use one of the sentiments and it says you're the apple of my eye this has kind of six large stamps in it fruit stamps and then it has six sentiment stamps that go with each one of the pieces of fruit so this is a fun stamp set and I figure I may as well use the sentiment as well and I'm going to cut it so that it stacks on top of each other because it wasn't going to fit there uh, across my little panel that I have so stacking it seemed like a good idea and this one says you are the apple of my eye I am going to stamp this out in some of the Versafine Onyx Black Ink which is what I stamped the apple out in this is why I love another one of the reasons why I love the Onyx Black Ink is because it is so versatile it's great for images it's really good for fine detail this is a uh, quite a small font here and it's nice crisp stamping and this way I can stamp my images with it and then I can stamp my sentiment and everything is going to coordinate nicely using the same black ink 
And then here, as I said, you could definitely pop this up on Fun Foam and give this some dimension. I didn't feel like that today, and I don't really know why, but I really love how the card turned out, so I was super happy with it. But you definitely could pop this up on some foam tape, and that would look really awesome as well. Uh, I just used some liquid glue, some Ranger Multimedium in the matte finish. Uh, that is what I used to glue this down. Then I use my long bladed scissors to trim off the edges, and I really, really like this. So just to finish this off, I did decide to give the kind of entire front panel some dimension. I score the fun foam with the edge of my scissors, and then I cut out this big panel. This is grey, but it doesn't bother me at all. I'm pretty much I'm always <laughs> of the mindset that I like to use up what I have, and I have uh, a bit of grey fun foam. This is just like kids fun foam that you get at a cheap and cheerful shop. Then I add a little bit more liquid glue, and this is going to go onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base, and that is a little bit of dimension that I was after. You could definitely stop here because this card looks gorgeous, but I'm going to add some glossy accents to these apples and make them kind of big, red, juicy looking apples. So this goes on a little bit cloudy and it gives a little bit of dimension, but as it dries, it is going to dry completely crystal clear. And this was really, really gorgeous. I'll give you a shot in a minute of what it looks like when it was dried as well. But it is nice and shiny and they do look like juicy red apples. You could also add a couple of Nuvo drops or some gems or anything around it. But I love the simplicity of this card. And this was a really fun one to create and not that tricky. A little bit of cutting, but apart from that, this was a really, really fun card. Here it is all nice and dry and glossy and dimensional and it looks gorgeous. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really, really appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks, bye.